home. I sing song opening the door into the living room. Anybody in? I continued and motioned for Karen to come in too. I dropped my overcoat and hat on the cushion chairs, trudging towards the kitchen. I left her to settle in. Make yourself at home, babe. I want to check in the kitchen, I said. I have told you to stop calling me babe. We are not a couple, she greeted out. And that's why we're representing the company in our captain's campaign, I stated, sarcasm dripping from my tone. Before we continue with the story, do not forget to click on the notification button in order to get notified at every new video posted. Thank you. She stared daggers at me. I chuckled because that was so Karen. Even though she tried to hide it, I could see how tired she was. High backs, slumped shoulders, and high irritation. Funny how time changes a lot of things, I thought to myself, and remembered how we met. I was a junior assistant to a marketing company. My parents are rich, but I wanted to earn my way to the top, so I decided to work at a newly opened agency. I was the best for so long that I got promoted and was given an office. Soon after, I was sent to the head branch. That's when the advert for a personal assistant or secretary was put up. Miss Karen, as I like to call her, had walked into my office a few days later for an interview. She had knocked and walked in. Mr. Keith? Keith Thompson? My name is Karen Day. I'm here for the job interview for personal assistant. She had looked so young, yet confident. I remember asking her sarcastic questions and shockingly, she had given me a pill of my medicine. I hired her on the spot. I showed her the reins, taught her principles and made her the best. I was like her big brother at work and truth be told, I felt good about that fact. It's been two years so far and we have grown so close. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but that's not it. We're just friends. The thought to be more has definitely crossed my mind, but my guess is that Karen would not want to pursue it for fear of losing our friendship. When our CEO announced our all couples campaign and the need for our company to participate, we were all smiles. It was a big step for the company. However, our joy was short-lived when Karen and I were selected to represent. I felt so uncomfortable, but I had to go with the flow. Karen had never been positive about the marital topic, so I had never brought it up. Despite being close, we never preyed on each other's private life. I tried to make the situation less awkward than it was already. After much planning and preparing, we finally took off yesterday. It had not been an easy flight, eight hours straight for the conference. Good thing my parents let us crash for the night because we wouldn't need all the rest we could get. So I left her in the parlor and went searching for the rest of the clan, pun intended. Out of curiosity, I paused at the door and watched her from the back. Still standing, she rotated on the same spot, admiring the design of the internal architecture. I saw her mouth gap open at the rectangular and square-shaped designs connecting the walls to the ceiling. Memories of my childhood came rushing in. I remember seeing the same expressions on other friends I had brought to our house. She was still standing in the same position when I left. I finally walked towards the kitchen, where I heard the familiar voices of my mom and kid sister. Hey you, Belinda, my younger sister by four years, reached over the kitchen slab table and hugged me. Miss me? She asked. Mm, nope, I replied and ruffled her hair playfully. Uncle Keith! Connie rushed into my open arms and hurt me. I stooped to her height as she reached out her little and fragile arms and squeezed my neck. How is my favorite niece? Nutty, and she wants chocolates, she said. Yeah, I got some, but you'll have to earn it, I declared, eliciting a grumpy face from her. She scrunched her face as if giving a thought about what I just said. Okay, shoot. For a five-year-old, she was very smart for her age. What's my favorite number? One, she responded immediately. Since high school, the number one had always been my lucky number, and it was even printed on my jersey. True, but it's plain. I sounded bored. Impress me. A calculated gleam lit her eyes. She cleared her throat and called out. One, un, ain, uno. Uh, she said calling out the figure one in different languages. Let me see. English? French? 
Dutch, Spanish, and um, I spoke laughingly out loud, and Courtney joined in giggling. Wow, I'm impressed, I told her. Now my chocolates, she said, raising her mini palm towards me. You know where they are. With that, she scurried off. I continued into the kitchen and hugged my mom from behind. And how is my girl? My husband. That's how she always called me. You know I'm a fighter, she said, and we both burst into laughter. This was our normal routine. Meanwhile, Karen couldn't help with curiosity. This how reeked of soul moments, picture taken from the family together, were spread over an entire section of the wall. She did not know when her feet carried her before what seemed to be the oldest picture at the center of the piece of every art she had just devoured. The picture revealed my parents in their youth. My mother was seated with me on her lap. Two siblings sat on the both arms of the chair, and my dad stood behind them. The picture painted a perfect family. Karen's back was turned against the door when Courtney walked in to get her chocolates. Grandpa doesn't take kindly to strange women in the house, especially the ones who stare. Let me guess. Courtney? Karen responded, turning to face Courtney, and not the least bit offended. I had already told her about my family. And you are? She asked, not afraid. Karen. Karen Day, Kate's colleague. Karen responded, stretching her hand for the five-year-old to shake. Instead, she ignored Karen's hand and folded her arms instead. She responded with her own questions. Are you his girlfriend? Whoa, Karen thought. That was blunt. How could a five-year-old know such a word? Um, actually, she began to respond but was interrupted. Who is whose girlfriend? A man asked, walking into the parlor with a handful of groceries, snack and drinks. Karen mentally thanked God he came before she embarrassed herself before a five-year-old. Courtney, come and get the keys. Tell Granny I'm back. He said, giving Courtney the keys. Then he turned to her. So you and Keith are an item, huh? He asked as soon as Courtney left. No, sir. I'm Karen, by the way. Kate's personal assistant and secretary. She spoke, stretching her hand to him. Strange. He continued completely ignoring Karen's greeting. What's with this family and ignoring people's handshake? thought Karen. We're not involved. I'm just his colleague, she insisted. If you say so, he put in, shrugging his shoulders. Karen felt like Kate's father measured her in his head. She mindlessly found herself and moved out to take a seat. Food is ready to be served. I emerged from the kitchen alongside my mom, Belinda and Courtney. We carried delicacies served in beautifully decorated dishes. Fifteen minutes later. So, tell me, Keith, when are you going to make this official? Dad asked, pointing between Karen and I. She choked on her drink and spurted over her dress and a section of the table. Sweetie, are you okay? Yeah, Mrs. Marshall, thank you, Karen replied, clearing her throat. So, Keith tells me both of you are colleagues, Dad continued. Oh, God, this is so embarrassing, she thought. Why were they only asking about our relationship status? This is so embarrassing. Yes, she agreed crisply. You never told me your family wanted to sell you out for marriage, she whispered to me. Relax, they're just messing with you, especially after telling them how you feel about marriage. You did what? She half yelled. Son, is everything okay? Yeah, dad. We continue to eat. Click clack of the culturally against the plate and the slush of liquid poured into glasses were the only sounds we could hear. Dad, Karen and I will be leaving first thing tomorrow morning. We have to be early at the summit. Your brother and sister will be landing tomorrow. You won't wait to see them? I caught Leslie already, Mom. We have reshadowed. I couldn't help but notice the pictures on the wall. You have such a beautiful family, Karen put in. So, Belinda cuts in. Tell us more about yourself, Karen. Um, I doubt there is much to tell, Karen said rather tightly. Oh, come on, don't be shy, Mom called her. Boo, there's nobody without a story, Dad supplied. You can tell us anything, they chimed in unison. But she hesitated, and just like that, everyone returned to their meal. All the time I had known Karen, she had never spoken much about her family. Suddenly, I found I was interested in it too. I watched several expressions cross her face, and I could only try to guess what she was thinking. 
"A penny for your thoughts," I whispered to her ears. Not in a million years, she whispered back. "Will you live for that long?" I asked sarcastically. Karen swatted her arm playfully. I will take a rain check on that offer. Keith finally resolves. The evening continued as a beautiful one, with all the discussing indistinctly into the night. And again, it made a point to myself to never mix business with pleasure. Karen and I bid goodbye to the family with a promise to return later. Of course, Mom insisted. I admit that Karen is a beautiful lady, but I'm not to mix business and pleasure. For two years, she has been working with me. I have never seen her as anything more than my colleague. It took last night's encounter with my family for my eyes to open. Maybe there could be something more. We still had time to spend as a couple for the duration of the summit. Perhaps she would change her mind. I hope for a miracle because by the end of this conference, I will make a move. We had arrived and immediately we went to the conference hall for the first day of summit. So many companies were represented. Personal benefits aside, I was glad our company was selected to be among. The evening passed well. We met new people, greeted the organizers, and shared a couple of dances, both as couple and with other people. Finally, we had to return to our chambers. Thanks to morality, we were given a suit with adjoining rooms. The days that passed were well spent. We were very responsive. We even created an impression on the organizing team. For a fact, we stood a chance at walking away with the highest fund for our company. It was last night. We were getting ready to leave. I had already packed my stuff, so I got a bottle of champagne and decided to join Karen in her room. Go on. I know you have something on your chest. I noticed she was restless. We can't work, she said. Pointing from me to her, vice versa. Uh, okay. Why? I don't do relationships, she said. I remain quiet, waiting for her to continue. I have never had an example of what a relationship is entailed to be. I, I don't, I don't know how to love. My parents weren't the best example. I'm scared. I'm scared too. So you're not alone. I chose to take a step of faith. And I hope she'll walk with me. You've noticed I'm not one to mix business with pleasure, but this is more than that, and I know you can feel it too. I took her hands in mine. It's okay if you're not ready now. Give me a chance to teach you how. How about we start as friends? I admit that was a funny way to ask her to be my girlfriend, but she said yes. We spent the night starting afresh and telling stories of our childhood. It finally dawned on me that we left the conference as singles were returned as a couple. As much as I can, I will do my best to be all that Karen wants in a man.